Hello, everyone. Good morning. I'm glad to see a lot of familiar faces here. And I'm delighted at the fact that we can actually sit down here and embark on an opportunity to celebrate the groundbreaking ceremony of next phase of 16 houses, affordable houses. This in itself is truly what we would call a milestone coming from the National Housing Development Trust of constructing 94 houses previously and having to go the route now of acknowledging there's a need and having to address that need. Okay, uh, as we go into this officiate meeting, I'm gonna call on Mr. Riley, which is my deputy and finance and admin manager to lead us into a word of prayer. I invite you to stand as we pray. Our loving Father, we gather here today to break ground for the construction of affordable homes for our community. We invite your presence with us. Lord, we acknowledge that every good thing that we do is because of your indwelling power in our hearts and in our hands. And so we thank you for where we are just now. Lord, we ask your blessings on, these, on this proceeding. Bless this ceremony, we pray. Not only bless this ceremony, Lord, but bless even this very spot where we stand. May this project that we have planned be executed efficiently. May there be no accident or ill adventure as the men work on this site. We pray your blessing on the contractors and their workers as they work here, Lord. We ask that your presence will be constantly in this place. Lord, today we ask that you bless the ceremony. We ask a special blessing on each and every one of us who are here today. Bless our premier for the one charge with responsibility of leading this great nation. Grant him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, we pray. Bless the minister and the ministry and all the other ministers who are here and the political leaders who have joined with us, we pray. Bless the chairman and the board and the staff of the NHDT. May as we plan together and work together to meet the social needs of our country, that you will grant us foresight, that you will grant us compassion in our hearts for those we serve. And when you come, save us in your kingdom we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I think we've already established the protocol of calling on the high one. I will now follow on with the other protocols of inviting, actually welcoming our Honorable Premier, Mr. Alden McLaughlin, our Deputy Premier, Mr. Moses Cornell, Honorable Minister, Mr. Dwayne Seymour, Councillor Captain Eugene, welcome. MLA's in attendance, Chief Officer, Ministers, Councillors, my loyal team, and all in attendance and loyal guests, welcome. As we go into the meeting, I will now call on the Honorable Premier to just give a few words and lead us into the ceremonies. Thank you, Mr. Ramos. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank all of you for coming out uh, this morning to help us mark this important occasion. I want to acknowledge as well the presence of almost my entire cabinet and uh, councillors, Captain Eugene, Ebanks, Barbara Connolly, and David White. I think that the number of us present here today is a clear indication of the importance we ascribe to this particular venture. I want to really thank the chairman of the National Housing Development Trust and his members for the hard work they have put in, not just over the course of this term, but the previous term, because quite frankly, those of you who are involved with this will understand how much time and effort 
it takes and how many hurdles you have to overcome to get to this point. And it really is because of the tremendous amount of work that they put in over the course of the last term that we're able to move ahead this morning with the groundbreaking for these 16 new affordable homes. I also want to thank the Chief Officer and the Ministry for the tremendous amount of work that they do. And leaving him for, for last, really, the Minister responsible, the Honorable Dwayne Seymour, who insisted when I was negotiating with him to join the government that part of the price of that would be he had to have responsibility for housing. So he really, he really cares deeply about this particular issue. But I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fact that he represents one of the Borden Town districts why we start here in Borden Town. Actually, Borden Town has been identified as one of the as the fastest growing district in the Cayman Islands and one which has the greatest immediate need for affordable housing. Hence, us moving forward this morning with this phase. Under, uh, uh, let me just say this before I move on to my written words. Um, this particular project is going to cost some $2.1 million. And I'm happy to say that we are being able to pay for this as a, uh, uh, with money that has been generated from the sales of the previous homes, the, the, the 20 homes built in the first phase of the Borden Town Affordable Housing Initiative. We are here on Lake Destiny Drive, which I think is most appropriate by building these homes, we are indeed improving the destinies of many here in these islands. To qualify for the new homes, buyers must be first home, first time homeowners, Caymanians, earning no more than 36,000 per year for a single occupant and 50,400 a year for joint applicants. They must also be employed or self-employed. I believe there are many Caymanians who will meet this criteria, and I wish all applicants success in their applications. As I said before, this project is being paid for through the cash flow generated from previous National Housing Trust sales. And under the previous administration, the trust was mandated to discontinue the lease, sublease, or rental of affordable homes and was tasked with transitioning all lease arrangements to sales because we wanted to give Caymanians a sense of pride in home ownership, owning their own homes. Many of you will remember the affordable homes built in 2004 that were constructed with inferior materials. Hurricane Ivan took many, in fact the majority of those homes, out and the ones that remain have been condemned. Between 2010 and 2013, 94 new houses were constructed to the building code standard in East End, Bordentown, Georgetown, and West Bay. I am proud that the program is again on the way and that these new homes are going to deserving Caymanians. I am also proud and happy that these homes will be completed within three months of the beginning of construction. So this is indeed a happy day for not only our people who work in the construction industry, but also for people who need and deserve affordable housing. Again, my, my thanks and gratitude to the chairman, my good friend Tony Powell, and other members of the Nashing, National Housing Development Trust, to the chief officer and the ministry, and to the minister who has been pressing ahead with this important initiative. <clears throat> I will now call on our Honourable Minister to deliver a statement and some key words. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming up to the East. <laughs> I want you to give the Cabinet and our government a round of applause for their support. mentioned by name, I 
don't think Minister Hugh was mentioned or Minister O'Connor Connolly. Give them a round of applause, please. Uh, and uh, MLA Kenneth Bryan is also here. And I uh, want to apologize for Minister Rivers and Minister Roy McTaggart, who sends their apologies. Uh, they had other commitments. And um, Emily Saunders, Bottentown West, is also here. Give them a round of applause, please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to be here this morning, celebrate the groundbreaking for 16 new affordable homes in Bottentown. Of course, I'm delighted that this site is my own constituency of Bottentown East, and I know the homes will be warmly welcomed by the persons and families who will soon have a place to call their own. Only in a home, there's a sense of community, and uh, a home is something you feel proud of. It's a fulfillment. It's a dream come true. For many, it's a true investment. You gain equity and you get a peace of mind for your family. It's great pride in home ownership. I can remember trying to get one of these very homes. Yes, and I was unable to qualify. And uh, a long time ago, <laughs> as a... <laughs> as Premier would remind me, but, I, <laughs> but I, I can tell you that when I joined the government, I asked the Premier to let me have housing. Um, I understand the importance of owning a piece of the Cayman Rock. Bottom Town is an area of the island where there is currently a high demand for affordable housing. So it's extremely pleasing that we have been chosen the first, phase, first site in phase two of the affordable housing initiative. But as Minister of Housing, I'm fully aware that affordable housing is an issue for people throughout the island. And I am reassured therefore that affordable housing will also be built in other areas as demand arises. Ladies and gentlemen, I congratulate the National Housing Development Trust for getting us to the stage today of having shovels in the ground. I know that a lot of hard work and commitment has gone into the project. Thank you to everyone involved in bringing the project from the planning stage to the start of construction. Ladies and gentlemen, give the National Housing Development Trust a round of applause and its board, its newly elected board, new, newly appointed board. It is my wish for everyone in the Cayman Islands to have a roof over their heads, knowing that they and their families are comfortable and secure in their home. That is why I'm a supporter of the Affordable Housing Initiative, which has already helped many Caymanians become property owners. And I task the board, my good friend, Mr. Powell, the chairman, to constantly look at the construct of what we're presenting to our people to ensure that it is truly affordable. I strongly believe that our decent, hardworking people should have the opportunity to purchase their own home and to take pride in their property. I will be watching construction of these homes with great interest and look forward to soon visiting my constituents in their new homes. In the meantime, congratulations once again to the National Housing Development Trust on, on beginning phase two of the Affordable Housing Initiative. As the old adage goes, there's no place like home. But like what the West Bay man says, he says, I don't need no loan, I need a house. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and remember next Wednesday, Agriculture Day, Join Minister O'Connor Connolly. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Well, there you go.
passionate about whom. I will now call on our counselor, Captain Eugene. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, thank you, Julio. Appreciate it. you having us here this morning. I too want to echo the sentiments of the Honorable Minister uh, about what a pleasure it is for us to be here this morning. As Councillor for Housing, I am extremely pleased that 16 new affordable homes are being built. While it is true that the Cayman Islands is an extremely successful financial jurisdiction and a top tourist destination, not all of our people are in a position to easily buy their own homes. As a government, we recognize this, and we will do all that we can to help make it possible for all Caymanians to purchase a property. And as a people, we're no strangers to hardship. And for generations, we took pride in our small homesteads with our white, pristine sun yards. So, times have changed, and we, as we flourished economically, we must ensure that all Caymanians benefit from our success story, including the right to have a decent place, decent and comfortable place to live. I am certain that each person who moves into this development will feel a great sense of pride at owning their own home. As they say, each man's home is his castle. Congratulations to all involved in the Borden Town Project. I hope West Bay will be the next district to benefit from this. I have to look after my people. Of this affordable, excellent, housing initiative. I look forward to working with the National Housing Development Trust over the coming years. It is a high priority for me to make sure that our fellow Caymanians have a place to truly call home. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Eugene. I will now call on the gentleman that when he was first appointed to the board or to National Housing, his mantra was home ownership. Not no ifs and buts with lease or sublease or part ownership, but he actually pushed the whole view of home ownership. While many criticize the fact that you know there is another need, he still persisted his home ownership, the way to go. I now call on my chairman, Mr. George Anthony Powell. Good morning and thank you, Mr. Ramos. Today is a very happy day for me to see the groundbreaking ceremony of these 16 new homes. I would like to thank the NHDT Board of Directors, which has put a lot of energy into getting us here today. The staff of the NHDT for assisting in phase two of Baden Town, which is now being implemented. I am very happy that this celebration of the 16 new homes are in Baden Town. And I'm sure Minister, Minister Dwayne Seymour is also happy about that. <laughs> These homes will include 11 three bedrooms and two baths, and five two bedrooms and two baths. The three bedrooms at a cost of 125 and the two at 110. The eligible applicants must be first homeowners with single earnings of no more than 36,000 as stated by the Premier, or 50,400 as joint applicants. They must first be vetted through the National Housing Trust and then passed on to the local participating banks. And I must say that while we're working with the GG Ham, which is the government guaranteed mortgage assistant, 
that most of the people that occupy the present homes here in Bontown have got financing at their own and have not taken up the GG Ham, which is a 35% guarantee by government. So government has very little liability to deal with those existing homes out there, which is good for government because it's not on their books as guaranteed anything for these homeowners. And I am hoping that by the time these homes are constructed, that they all will be so. We have actually started the process now of assessing applicants and hopefully between the construction of these homes by the eight contractors that have been awarded, these homes would have all been sold. A home is the most single important investment for any human being. And I am proud as much as my board to be here enabling Caymanians to own a home today. The job of the National Housing Trust is not to lease, not to rent, but to provide home ownership. And that has been my mandate, as Mr. Ramos has said, from day one. When I took over the trust five years ago, I think I still have the survey somewhere in my briefcase, 87% of the Caymanian public said the trust should be done away with. It has been mismanaged. The first time I saw gray hairs, as I scratched him in those board meetings and wonder what I got myself into. But thank God today, we are sailing smooth. We are sailing very smooth. And my vision for the trust is to continue to develop. Develop communities, not only build houses, because I don't want anybody to think that these people that live here are the bottom end of society. I want to build homes and create communities, angle homes, make it a subdivision, elect community leaders so that we can keep the social problems away before they come into our communities. That is my goal. And I want to touch a little bit on what I believe the Alter General said and was echoed by one of the medias that we were the second biggest losers. We are not. We are not. There were mistakes made by the trust. And the biggest contribution in the budget to the trust is for bond commitment, or loans, whatever you want to call it, that was taken out by previous governments. And that is the biggest contribution that the Cayman Islands government makes to the trust. We're not there, as the newspaper article said, draining, draining, draining all of the money of the government. We're not there doing that. In, if previous ministers made a mistake, whoever's elected has to honor those commitments to the private sector. Whether the mistakes were big or small, in this case, the bonds that were issued to build those 125 homes that are all going to be demolished, we are paying it back now. And that is where the dream they talk about is. But whether this government built it or not, the bonds had to be repaid. So I want to take that, when you look at the newspaper, they say it's a big dream on government, it's not. The onus of the expenditure that government really contributes to the trust is the administration of the staff. And that is unlike, unlike any other government department. And the onus expenditure there, which is really a book entry, is the value of the homes compared to the cost of construction. A book entry only. The homes are 180, at the value of 180, and we are selling them at 125,000. So there's automatically equity in there for the homeowners. Otherwise than that, government makes no contribution to the trust. As a matter of fact, as I stand here today, all of the funding providing for these 16 homes are coming from the National Housing Trust. Government is making no contribution to it. When I took chairmanship, we were at bare bones. Today, we are over $6 million in reserve in the National Trust. Hopefully our next project will be in Georgetown, where there's a high demand for home ownership. And as soon, <laughs> Mr. Banks, I, I didn't forget you, was come to you, you hopped, in, you hopped over the gun a little bit. And as the demand gets, as we move into West Bay, but you certainly have to let us know what your demand is, and we will certainly take care of it. We will not do any projects unless 
those involved are briefed or they brief us and let us know where this situation is. I also don't want to forget the contributions made by Minister Tibbetts. Mr. Tibbetts made a very valuable uh, contribution to the Trust. And some of the past board members that may or may not be here with us today, Mr. Tate Ebanks, Mr. Corner Gomez, Mr. Lucille Barnes, and Mr. Ray Barrington. I want to thank the present NT in HDT board, the staff, which has done a wonderful job in getting us here today for their dedication and preservation and hard work. We have come a long way, baby, and this is just a start. As we move along to the groundbreaking actual ceremony, I want to thank all those that took the time out to attend today because it shows how important this issue is in our community and in our islands. And as I continue as chairman, you can look forward to the trust moving on. I want to say to Minister Seymour, I don't know if this was a coincidence or not, but that project committee you got there, which is made up of men of Bontanos, has hit the ground running. They have hit the ground running. They got me tired just listening to the phone calls, but they have hit the ground running. I want to thank Mr. Vincent Frederick for cheering on, Mr. Vincent, and Mr. Barry, Mr. Oscar, a great job, thank you so much. I want to thank Ms. Christine Burke and Mr. Harwell, I don't know if Mr. Harwell's here today, for their dedication in assessing these applications so that we can get people in these homes as soon as they're completed. We are going to move and move fast and do what our mandate is, provide homes for the Caymanian people. Thank you very much. And I want to also thank Mr. Alan Bush for his previous contributions to this board and what he will be doing with the contractors. So all the contractors here look good. Mr. Allen is going to be your policeman in this job. We all know that he's, very vet he's a veteran in the construction industry. Every time you look out the window, you're going to see Mr. Allen. So you better make sure it's right because you won't be getting a check without him. I'm getting it all sorted out. Thank you, Mr. Premier, and all the ministers that come in today, and all the um, members of the government. I want to thank you for taking this opportunity to witness this ceremony. May God bless you all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just so you know, I actually have some gray hairs as well. Um, I started naming them after my staff and some members, but um, I think I'm getting that sorted. Uh, I think you all have been briefed on just about everything, its accomplishment and what we hope to achieve. Right now, we're gonna go into the groundbreaking photo opportunity to officiate this project, and I will call on Honorable Premier. <laughs> 